Hey guys, it's Holly. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about David in the Bible and we're going to be talking about David's um, depression. And so this will be a mental emotional wellness video and I'm going to get right into it. This will be fairly short. So right now we're looking at Psalm 69 and King David as a warrior and I apologize in advance if you hear my son in the background on his video game but this is the best I can do right now so also my laptop um, the sound on it really sucks right now so I'm working on um, getting a different device to go with it but the sound is better on my phone so I'm trying to film more videos on my phone um, but for now we're gonna use the laptop for this one so here in Psalm 69, um, from the beginning of the psalm, it says, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the myriad depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I am worn out, calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail, looking for my God. So David's in a bad place, and this particular article says he has been sinking in the merry depths, the floodwaters are rising over his head, he can no longer get a foothold. He's in trouble, so he's calling to God for help. In fact, he's already been calling out to God. He says he's been calling for God's help so much that his throat is parched. Um, and then it says here, let's see. Then in... David also cries out in Psalm 22. He says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he's screaming, Where are you in my time of trouble? So, anyways, I feel like this is really powerful when he says, I'm supposed to be a man after your own heart, but I'm fighting for my life and you are nowhere to be found. So, he definitely went through a lot of despair. I will say that and I'm not gonna read a whole bunch on this particular article because this was only one particular thing I wanted to read off of this one but this particular article um, is talking a lot about PTSD and depression um, from people like military personnel that have been in war and stuff like that so anyway so we're gonna go on to the next article that I want to touch base on and I hope you guys don't mind me reading off my phone but this is just the easiest way the best way I feel like I can get my point across so here we go with this one and so here we have Psalm 13 which was written by David so his struggles are clear in scripture David had a more challenging life than many of us he had a humble beginning, was chosen by God to be king, and had, and as king faced a very jealous predecessor. David had clearly identified enemies and made major mistakes in his life. In that context, he expressed a vast range of emotions in writing his psalms. Unlike other emotionally challenging psalms, this one cannot be pinpointed to a specific event in David's life, which is kind of interesting. So, one, how long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? So the first two verses show us David's struggles. His emotional state has been going on for a while. Then he asks four times, how long? Um, the fact that he asks how long four times tells us this is not a new emotional state. When sorrow or sadness hits, we don't immediately question how long we will feel this way. So he's expressing a feeling of abandonment, questioning if God's forgotten him. Um, and then it goes on to say the question of God hiding his face goes deeper than merely being forgotten. So the expression in the Old Testament that indicates God's blessing on a person is to say that God's face would shine on them. David has not seen God's blessing as he had experienced many times before. We experience this in our lives as well, obviously. Okay, so... Um, I don't want to go over the whole thing because it's so long. Um, I've got, okay. So David's feeling abandoned by God. Um, and he keeps saying, how long? How long will my enemy triumph over me? 
so um so he just keeps going over this and uh, for a person wrestling as david was at this time it's no exaggeration to feel that the enemy is triumphing over us so and not even from a religious perspective the enemy could be anything it could be just the situation that you're facing so if you're not religious just try to look at it that way because that makes a lot more sense so um look on me and answer lord my god give light to my eyes or i will sleep in death and my enemy will say i have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when i fall so david makes three requests look on me answer and give light five but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. These final verses suggest God is answering David's prayer. While all is not immediately well, David, having prayed what he did honestly in vulnerability, um, is now able to express his trust in God. He has remembered God's unfailing love and his heart rejoices over his salvation. David's heart has been renewed. God has put a little light back into his eyes. When he notes God's been good to him. Okay. So. So a few practical thoughts to help us apply this psalm in our lives. If David, a man after God's own heart, can wrestle with sorrow and sadness, anxiety and feelings of abandonment, why should we think for a minute that we would be exempt from that possibility? We all have seasons of life where we need support. Um... Sadly, too often, Christians don't open up for fear of rejection. We need one another. We need to pray together and share what is really going on in our lives. So when depressed, our minds are not clear and our vision is limited. Be cautious about what we do when we are in this state. Avoid making big life decisions in the midst of darkness because our perceptions are skewed. So... Depression can stem from a wide variety of conditions, life events, job situations, a chemical imbalance, deep-seated sin, or just relational struggles. We need to caref be careful how we treat people who face depression because they often have not brought it upon themselves. Some of us are genetically predisposed. This is a result of the fall, and I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, so... Anyways, so that's that article, and I really, I liked that one, except at the very end. So, again, David was depressed as a king, and David went through a lot, and he dealt with, you know, a lot of abandonment, a lot of sorrow, and feelings of being abandoned, and I feel like, you know, a lot of us, when we're depressed, we get to feeling that way as well. We feel like we're, we've been abandoned. We feel um, just alone. And it's so lonely. It can be so isolating. So it really, you know, it helps me to look at the story of David. And then I enjoy looking at the story of David and just kind of understanding it a little bit better. And so there's a lot that we can get out of it out of the story of David when it comes to um, depression, but I think I've gone over most of what I want to, to kind of just get my point across, and so there's this one particular article that says, mental disorder that affl afflicted King David the Great, and you can't really see it because my light is like so glaring right now, but at least you guys can see me, but anyways, um, so yeah, so obviously he was dealing with some depression, anxiety, but again, you know, back then, I highly doubt they called this mental illness. I highly doubt they said, oh, you are mentally ill because you're feeling this way. Um, and again, I can't stress enough how society has, you know, got us into this whole thing of mental illness and, you know, I'm not going to get into it, guys, because I've gotten into it so many times, but most of you... If you watch my videos on mental and emotional wellness, you know that I don't really agree with calling depression and anxiety a mental illness. So, it is um, a product of life. It's a fact of life. It's something that is going to happen to all of us at some point in time in one way or another, um, if not multiple times. So, I mean, you just can't live a whole entire life in this life. Um, 
without experiencing that at some point. There's just no way. So anyways, I hope this video helps. I will see you guys in the next one. And that's about all I wanted to cover on David right now, but we might dive a little bit deeper at a later date. I love you guys so much and I'll see you soon. Bye.